Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Uh, yet another disease model in this one, but now we're going to build a more real... Well, it will be far from reality, but it will be a simulation and not a an analytical model and not and will not be fitting in a data to curve or anything. It was would be a simulation. So let me show you what I'm what I'm talking about here. So you might have seen uh, this article uh, by the Washington Post, where you have uh, we're starting with one infected guy that infects others. And we see that more people are getting sick, less people are getting healthy, and after a while people may start to recover as well. Yeah, there you go, there's a few. Uh, and this is the sort of thing that I thought would uh, build. The, the minute I saw this article, I re immediately started thinking, how, how would I implement this? Because it, it is very, very fascinating. One of my favorite YouTube cha channels called uh, Three Blue, One Brown also uh, made a, uh, an implementation of, uh, of this. With uh, within the same sort of framework uh, as one of my uh, my other videos, where you have susceptible and you have infectious people, and you also have recovered S I R. This one is really good. Since I uh, I am a physicist and I have been doing a lot of uh, disease models lately, I thought I mentioned this Reddit post I saw this morning from the physics Reddit of this guy saying that the best thing you can do to fight COVID-19 is nothing, stop writing that paper, don't put it on ar archive. So in recent days we've seen an influx in papers on the archive modeling the spread of COVID-19. Many of these are relatively simple papers, clearly written by physicists using simple SIR models. Some basic curve fitting, easing models to, s to model the spread of uh, COVID-19. I'm ranting to ask you from the bottom of my heart, cut that shit out. So I promise you, this will most likely be the last one of my disease model videos. So what we'll be using is a uh, framework or a library for Python called Pygame. Uh, it's actually made for uh, making games, but uh, if we are going to implement you know, a lot of sprites essentially, because that's when you have a game, stuff that goes around over the screens and that interacts with each other and with you, the player and so on, they're usually called sprites. And, and Pygame handles this very efficiently with some sort of hyper-threading or something that makes it go quite fast. So we'll, we'll make good use of that because it fits our problem quite well, actually. And, and I actually started learning Python because I wanted to program some games. I didn't use Pygame then, but uh, I remember for my first scientific programming course here at the University of Oslo, uh, I failed all the homeworks and had to get a new attempt because I learned some some practices that I, I needed to unlearn, really. So it wasn't a uh, an advantage to know how to program beforehand when you got into um, scientific programming at the university. Let's begin. We are going to be needing some uh, libraries, high game, and sys, and we'll also import NumPy. And uh, first of all, we need to define some colors that will be universal throughout the uh, the game. Black in RGB is 000, zero, zero. white is 255, 255, 255, so these are, these are red, green and blue values. Yeah, let's just keep those for now and our standard background color would be white. So first of all we'll define a class and uh, it will uh, present people, but we'll uh, emotionally distance ourselves from people and just call it dot, but it's because it could be anything else really. So it's supposed to be a dot on the screen. This we are going to implement or inherit from the sprite class from, uh, from Pygame. And we need uh, an initializer. It should take a position an X and Y and it uh, needs the width of the screen, the height of the screen and it needs a color and we'll set black as default. Uh, it's supposed it will just be a circle so let's also set the radius standard as 5 and it probably needs some sort of velocity and we'll write that as X and Y values and that should be it. So now we're just assigning a bunch of attributes to this uh, this guy. So uh, first we need to call the uh, initializer in the um, 
the parent class that we're inheriting from, from. and uh, because you draw stuff on on images or on surfaces in Pygame, we need to assign some uh, member to this class that takes we call it image uh, surface. So this is all. This is a class in Pygame surface. So this will be the size of the dia diameter of the circle that we'll draw on it. So it'll be. Uh, radius times 2 will be the width and radius times 2 will be the height of it and we'll draw the background col color on this uh, this rectangle essentially so we'll fill this with background so now this is a white square and on this white square we'll draw a circle um, so we'll draw on the image uh, variable in some color and this will be our input color on line 16 up there. The position of it, it needs an x and y position, will be a radius and a radius. And the radius of it will be the radius. How amazing is that? Okay, what else? Because we are really dealing with the rectangular objects, they, you can think of these sprites like having a, a hitbox, is what you would call it in, in Super Smash Brothers or any other game. So, and uh, we call this a uh, the rectangle or rect. So image dot get rect. So these this will give it the um, the position of it and the boundaries of it and the size and what we need. We'll also store our uh, the position of our little uh, dot here. Uh, we haven't really put it on the screen yet, but we'll get to that as a NumPy array, so we can easily add the velocity for each uh, each frame update. And we'll see that the data type, just to make sure that we, we specify these, because we cannot add integer types and um, float types in NumPy. And the velocity is uh, the velocity also a numpy floating point variable like so we also need to assign the um, width of uh, this guy and that's all the variables we need there for now the only other thing that we need to implement in a sprite class is uh, a method called or a function called update which updates the position of it and all other attributes. So right now, what I think we'll do, there are two things that we need to consider. Well, first of all, we will update its uh, position, self.position, and add the velocity. So the velocity is the distance it, is, it travels per frame update. And x and y, we're going to check these because there are some boundary conditions that we need to consider. What I'm, what I'm meaning is that what happens when we reach an edge of our of our screen and defined by the width and the height variables. Height. Um, so I want to introduce periodic boundary conditions meaning that when you reach an edge the position of the, the dot wraps around and the dot appears on the other side of the screen or the the place we can be. So there are four edges that we need to consider. So if x is less than zero, that's the, the leftmost uh, edge, then we say that self.position zero equals the opposite side, which will be the width, right? And let's also up update this uh, x because we need to add some variables to the rectangle as well. We could have just kept the x's, but uh, I, I kind of want to add some some random numpy functionality to the, ve the velocity in a in a while. Uh, so I want to keep these uh, numpy variables in addition to these um, x's and y's. Yeah, you'll see why in a while. What other cases do we have? Well, if x is less or is more than self dot width, then we want to set the position, the x position as zero, and likewise for the x. And if the y value is less than zero, we want to update the position, the y position to self.height, the y value to self.height as well. 
and there's only one case remaining now and that is if y is less no is more than self dot is greater than self dot height then we want to set the y position to zero and y to zero and we also need to update the values of the rectangle which are the the objects that are actually drawn on the screen so that's the, the basic framework so this is we could have as an alternative to this periodic boundary condition scheme implemented uh, just reverse the velocity of the uh, object when you you hit the edge that's fine as well but I, I really like this one maybe because I'm a physicist okay so now we could um, put a bunch of these dots on a screen and see if it works let's just uh, run it first to see if it throws any errors does not it works so uh, the first thing we need to do is uh, we need to initialize a game uh, 600 by 400 should do it that's some regular screen rest aspect ratios isn't it and then we'll go pygame dot in it initialize the game and then we will say that our screen spy game dot display dot set mode with uh, height then we will uh, add some guys for i in range 10 guys and we'll also make a container. So this is what is good with um, with Pygame is that um, it has all these uh, classes and containers already that I can just put things in. Calls the update me method on all of them when we update the, um, the, the the next frame. So we'll say that this is a Pygame dot sprite dot group. That's really all we need. And then we can say that okay. We'll add them at random positions. So x is np dot random dot rand int with plus one because this function doesn't include the last variable, only the first one. Height plus one. So those are some random x and y locations. Let's also set the velocity np dot random rand int. Yeah, we can just do this. Uh, so that will be an array of two variables and they each will be a, a random number between 0 and 1. So if we multiply that by 2 and subtract 1 then we get numbers between minus 1 and uh, 1, right? So that will be our random initial velocities for uh, our our guys and then we'll go guy equal we need an x a y a width a height a color uh, let's make a blue color so let's go up to our colors here so a nice blue color I already written some of these dyes down will be blue is fine just go down here here again and then, yeah, so the color would be blue and the velocity would be this well, well. And yeah, I guess that's it. The radius will keep at five. And we'll add all these to the container dot add guy. Because these are sprites, they will be right at home in that sprites group container thing. And now, we will start the uh, the actual game or our simulation. So we'll have some T that it only runs for a certain amount of time steps, I think. I think we could put that at the uh, 200 or something. Yeah. Then we'll also initialize a clock. Well, what we'll use this for is to just... Um, we, d we don't want it to run at maximum speed all the time can be a bit tiresome from my computer, my tiny laptop. And then for i in range t, well first we'll check if we have closed the game. This is something you always do in Pygame. 
So we'll check for any events, and if the events.type equals pygame.quit, then we will. This is the only thing that we'll use sys for. We will exit the program. That's just some precaution because um, if we close the window and uh, these few lines aren't here, then uh, it would just keep running uh, without the window and. Yeah, we'll have to wait, and there, there will be a process running in the background, and it will be, you know, uncool. And then, we will update everything. So this will call the update method of all our guys that are in this container, all our dots. And then, we will fill the screen, so we'll do this each time, so that we will uh, draw over everything, essentially, and then we will draw the uh, uh, the dots in our container on the screen. We'll update the display. This is a method called flip. And then we'll just uh, wait for a short while. You, you can relax for a while, computer. And then when this thing is done, we'll go pygame.quit. Let's see what happens. Okay, so we have a problem here. Pygame has no attribute display. Forgotten S, Magad. Okay, let's uh, let's try it again. Here you go. So now let's just watch some of the dots that reach the edges, like this guy. Oh, it's over already. Let's increase the T, capital T, to a thousand. So we'll actually manage to watch them. Here it is. So that guy went out there and appeared here. So that's fine. And they're moving quite slowly. Yeah, but we have the the basic to basic fun functionality, which is good. Well, let's watch this guy now. Appear there, and now he goes up there. Appear there. Same with this guy. Out there, out there. Yeah, so I think think that's good. So now we could just you know instead of just uh, ten ten dots, we could add uh, hundred if you like. There you are. A lot of guys.